cloud. It's really coming down over here. Yeah, this storm has gotten really bad since we started. Good thing we're almost done. For real. So, I just call this function here, right? That's right. And honestly, I think that'll do it. Nice. I'll just uh, save this and... Wait a second. What's wrong? Was that code there before? What code? Where? Scroll down. Okay... Wait, what the heck? I didn't write that. Hmm. Are there other people working on this project? Uh, yeah, but I'm not really sure who. I just randomly came across this repo on GitHub. Really? Yeah, I'm trying to contribute to some open source projects for Hacktoberfest. Haha, <laughs> right. Gotta get that free shirt. You know it. Well, that explains this weird comment. Just some zombie code that someone left behind. Zombie code? What's that? It's just code that's been commented out. It usually gets created when developers refactor something and don't want to delete their old logic. Huh, that's funny. I can't believe it's called that. Yeah, well, it technically is undead. I mean, it's dead in the eyes of the running application, but it's always lingering there, waiting to be brought back to life. <laughs> nice. Which is why I always recommend getting rid of it as soon as you find it. You mean, delete it? Oh yeah, it's bad enough that people rely so heavily on comments, but zombie code, it's another level. Hmm. Trust me, it'll save you a lot of hassle in the long run. Okay, you say so. Whoa! That was close. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm surprised you didn't lose power. Tell me about it. Hey, are you alright? <sighs> yeah, I felt kind of strange there for a second. But, uh, I think I'm alright. What were we talking about? Uh, you were talking about comments. Oh, right. Developers typically leave zombie code around because they're afraid to lose their old logic. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, but that's what source control is for, right? So you have a complete history of the changes you make to a project. Oh, yeah. Yep. It's like I always say, a good comment is a deleted comment. What? Sure, zombie code is bad, but I thought comments were a good thing. They have their place, but nine times out of ten, they just end up being misleading. Huh. Really? Think about it. Comments live in your code, right? Which means they have to be maintained like your code, too. Like, updated? Exactly. Let's say you write a function and leave a comment that describes exactly what it does. Okay. Yeah, I do that a lot. <laughs> All right, now let's say I come along and decide to tweak that function to fill some new requirement. Sure. You think I should have to update your comment too? Well, if you changed the way the function worked or added some new logic, then uh, yeah, I suppose you should. Aha, uh -huh. so that means that I have to do double the work every time I modify some of your code. Is it really that bad? Yeah, it depends on how many comments you leave. <laughs> I do like to be thorough. Which is fine, but again, it ends up being a lot of work in the long run. Especially since most developers I know aren't as disciplined as you. You mean some people just ignore the comments? Absolutely. Imagine working 12-hour crunch days leading up to a release. Believe me, no one updates comments then. Yeah, I guess I could see that. Huh, point and case. Looks like someone left even more zombie code in that class. Huh, you're right. Was that there before? You know what? I'm not sure. But I do know one thing. Let me guess. Delete it. Delete it. <coughs> wow, man. That storm is getting really bad over there. <coughs> so are you, man. Maybe we should call it a night. No, no, I'm, I'm okay. Besides, I still see a bunch of comments that we need to get rid of. All right. I mean, if you say so. But, you know, Charles, I really don't think we should delete any of these. How come? Well, I get that they're a pain to keep around, but all these comments are documented in the code. How are we going to know what it does if we remove all this inline documentation? Easy. We just need to make the code document itself. Huh. Self-documenting code? I've heard of that, but come on. That would take forever to write. It's actually much easier than you think. Really? Okay, I'll bite. How would we do it? Well, the most important thing you can do is bake your intent right into the code. Bake my intent? I think I'm gonna need an example. Of course. Check out the if statement at the top of this function. Uh, yeah, okay. Now, could you honestly tell me what the programmer intended with that logic without reading the comment? Hmm, let's see. The spacebar is being pressed, and the position's y value is zero, and the weight field is less than 100. Okay, I see your point. I mean, I could pretty much reason through it, but yeah, it takes a second. Yeah, and there's a good chance you'll forget what it does later on, too. Okay, fair enough. So how do we make this code self-documenting? One word. Encapsulate. Hmm. Go on. Here, let's start with that check for input. That's pretty easy to read, right? Oh yeah, I'd say so. Just checking to see if the player is pressing the spacebar, right? Right. But what about that second condition? Hmm. Well, I'm guessing it's checking to see if the player is grounded. I think so, too. 
So why not just encapsulate that value in a variable called is grounded? Okay, yeah, I can do that. Like that? Exactly. Now, how about that last condition? Um, looks like it's checking to see if the player's too heavy to jump. So I guess I could create a variable called is weighed down, right? <laughs> Sounds good. You're getting it. Nice. Okay, it's actually looking better already. Definitely. Now let's take one last step. Go ahead and refactor is grounded and is weighed down into auto properties. Okay. And should I just use expression bodies? Yep. Okay. Now, replace those properties in your if statement with another auto property called can jump that returns the result of that check. Oh, I see, because that's what I actually care about. Yes, that is your intent. All right, this is actually pretty cool. It's way more obvious what this function does now. <laughs> Dare I say, it's self-documenting? <laughs> okay, I think that's fair. So, is that all there is to it then? Just encapsulate everything? Well, there's definitely other things to consider, like structuring your classes consistently, using clear naming conventions, and keeping your logic decoupled. But generally speaking, encapsulating your logic into easy to read functions and property getters will definitely take you far. Cool. I think it's an easy place to start, and I can see how it can make a big difference. You know what? I think I'm gonna clean up some more of this code before I call it a day. Uh, Charles? Are you okay? Dude, I don't wanna freak you out, but that code was not there before. Huh? What? More zombie code? What the heck is going on? I don't know, man, but I think you should just delete it and call it a night. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good idea. Oh man, I think the power just flickered. Charles? Charles, are you there? Oh well, it's probably time I call it a night anyway. That was getting a little weird. Thank you to all of my patrons, and a special shout out to Rob Homewood, DJ Weaver, Sarah Chatterjee, Jennifer Irwin, Christian, Urizer, Alan Caravilla, Amit Sarin, Mighty Possum, Amar Jaravonic, Dustin, Patrick Bungo, Nav from Academy of Games, Asif Ali Castle, Tron, Glasswell Entertainment, and R-Star. Thank you all. <laughs>